Arizona Senator John McCain learned this week he has a malignant brain tumor above his eye. Now, this was shocking news for his family and many people across the country, and now he and his family are weighing the treatment options. Joining us now to talk about this specific type of cancer and what the next steps could be is Dr. Anup Patel, a neurosurgeon with UW Medicine. You can't speak specifically about this case, case, which I understand, but let's talk about this specific type of cancer. It's glioblastoma. Uh, what exactly is going on in the brain with this cancer? Yeah, exactly. It's, um, you know, uh, Marnie, it's a, it's a tumor that arises from the tissue of the brain itself, um, and it is unfortunately the most common, but also the most aggressive form of uh, tumors that arise in this area. And why is it so aggressive? So uh, it, it relates to the fact that uh, there's a tumor mass, which we can take out surgically, but then um, just by its very nature, this tumor is invasive and infiltrative, uh, meaning that there are individual cells that kind of crawl out into the normal surrounding brain tissue, and those we obviously can't take out surgically. Does it stay in the brain, or can it go in other parts of the body? So it typically uh, doesn't leave uh, the brain, um, but what makes it such an aggressive tumor is that it does spread very far out in the brain and can really affect all parts of the brain. Now, in McCain's case, which, again, we're not talking specifically about, but they remove the tumor. Right. So in general, when they do that, uh, why do you still have to treat it in those cases with chemo and radiation? And continue treatment. Right, so it goes back to the point I was just making that, you know, those tumor cells that have spread out from the main tumor that we remove, um, you have to find a way to target those, and so that's what the chemotherapy and the radiation are for, is to try to target those cells that are outside the main mass of the tumor. Okay, and so chemo and radiation then do what? So they um, essentially effectively, um, chemo and radiation are both designed to uh, attack rapidly dividing cells, which is uh, presumably these cells that are sort of migrating out there, dividing and, and, and expanding and, and making more tumor cells. And so that's the goal of uh, radiation and chemotherapy is to try to halt that process. Is treatment different as someone ages? So if you're talking about somebody who has this type of cancer in their 40s or 50s versus somebody who's 80? Well, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a ton of uh, uh, sort of specialized treatment regimens based on age. Um, uh, in some cases, um, older patients, uh, depending on their sort of overall sort of health and, 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 their, and their sort of vitality, uh, do need to have some of the treatment regimens kind of dialed down a little bit just to make sure that they can handle it systemically. What are some of the symptoms for this cancer before it's diagnosed that may show up that would send someone to the doctor? Right, right. So the, uh, you know, uh, the most common uh, symptoms are, are, are sort of vague general symptoms, things like headaches and, and, and nausea, vomiting, that sort of thing. But really the things that people should be concerned about is sort of a recurring pattern of those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, really specific things like seizures or stroke-like symptoms, difficulty speaking, uh, weakness on one side of the body or the other. And those are the types of things that obviously would uh, result in a patient presenting uh, uh, to the emergency room. And, and then how would diagnosed. something like this be diagnosed? So typically it's with um, an MRI mm -hmm. um, or a CT scan but more commonly an MRI. And uh, that typically shows the classic imaging findings of this, of this tumor and then uh, the sort of downstream treatment is all, is all based on that. You know, we're very fortunate in this region. I was talking to you in the commercial break about uh, so many talented right, uh, people right. in the medical field here and also so many treatments and advancements in care for cancer, uh, immunotherapy being one. Sure. Is that something that would be an option in this type of cancer? Yeah, so uh, immunotherapy has made some really incredible strides in a variety of different tumor types. Um, uh, you know, sort of across the board, melanoma, lung cancer, that sort of thing. It's still very experimental in terms of uh, brain tumors, and uh, there's a variety of reasons for that. Uh, the brain has a special sort of privileged uh, place in the body where it's not ex as accessible to a lot of the immune type therapies that we uh, would typically use for other tumors. Mm -hmm. However, there is a lot of work going on at UW Medicine uh, in particular on the use of immunotherapy, and we are trying to push uh, the frontiers of that with uh, a large body of research to try to get that stuff to prime time for brain tumors as well. Yeah, and it it's being used in so many different cares. How is it different when you're working with the brain? Well, the brain is a, is a unique organ. It is it is exquisitely sensitive to everything that we do. Um, you know, it's it's irreplaceable, and, and so that makes everything. Every time we're dealing with with the with the brain, it makes it just that much more difficult. Final question: What is survival survivability with this type of cancer? Yeah, it's very hard to to comment specifically on that. Um, there's such a wide range of uh, of, of of patient survival uh, in this particular tumor factors, such as just you know how overall healthy the patient is, down to the sort of molecular and genetic mutations that exist in a person's specific tumor. Mm -hmm. um, but that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, an avenue of research where people are really looking into kind of long-term uh, survival in this. Well, I appreciate situation. you giving us some insight into it. Uh, very good to meet you. I know you're new to the area, so welcome to the team, Dr. Anup Patel. Thank you very much for having me, Marnie. David.